Okay. I'm going to work a little bit since Anne is here and <clears throat> Susan is here too. You'll like this. Uh, with a chair, if you have one, grab one that's not too dear to you. And so we'll be doing a lot of things just using the chair as a prop. For example, while you get your chairs ready, if you don't have a chair, you could use a wall. But I had worked with Ann the other day on shoulder things and the way to protect the shoulders. So we're going to be doing some, some postures like low lunge with the support of a chair. So instead of doing, for example, a side angle pose coming down onto the front knee, we're going to end up using our chair, the back of our chair like that. So hopefully you've got something like that. If you don't, um, again, you could improvise. You could go to a wall and do your forearm against the wall like that. And the main thing is here, as people join into class, we're going to work on um, strengthening, mobilizing, protecting your shoulder capsules, which get or can get destroyed in yoga because of all the old school Chaturanga Dandasan, where people typically in vinyasa classes do this movement from down dog, they shift forward a high plank, then they're asked to lower down and flip the dog over. And what happens is there's so much pressure on the shoulder capsule. And if it's done badly, even if it's done well, in my opinion, you can really ruin your shoulders over time. So we're gonna look to that and work with that a little bit. Let's start just seated. You can take support or not. And do a little bit of pranayama since it's a little bit of a dreary day here in New England. So we're going to do our 20 breath pranayama that I used to do a year ago with two kumbhaka holds. I'll take you through it. No worries. But the first thing I want you to do is just take your hands, either the backs of the hands, or the palms, whichever easier, to your back ribs. And just begin to breathe and feel those low back ribs billowing out. And then I'll move closer to show you what I mean. For some reason, I think of a frog when I do this. So a lot of people, when they inhale, are kind of lifting their chest up like that. But instead, I want you to just Breathe open as we draw Udi and the Bandha in here, the back ribs. So I can feel the spreading of the, the back ribs like that. Even it feels like a little bit of a paradox or a paradoxical means of breathing. So that's the first step. And this is going to play into our our shoulder work later on. So see if you can get that back lung breath going because 60% of your lung capacity actually is in the lower back lobes of the lungs. So here we go. We're going to inhale, exhale 20 times. I'll take you through it. Then we're going to release and pause in the exhale as long as you want. Then we'll inhale, pause briefly, and go again. So get a good seat, get your frog breath going, and inhale, exhale. And you can just open your mouth, inhale, exhale. Really feel all the capacity of the lungs. Keep going. Ten more.
we were one more. Now release that exhale, soften your belly, and you put a hand there. Just let the breath stop. Let the diaphragm relax. I'm talking, but have a little hot belly. You don't need to inhale. Now, those that practice this, you can go up to two minutes without inhaling. I'm not going to force you to do that today, but if you want to go a little bit longer, you can. Otherwise, we inhale, and then we cap that off. This one is just a five second deal. It's nice, it's like we swallowed something, we're tasting it. And then we get your frog breathing back. Here we go again, 20 breaths. And this is pretty rapid. You don't need to open the mouth. You can contain the ujjayi in the back of the throat, but I like to let it go. Keep going. Now, if you're getting spacey, this exercise can be done lying down. Keep going. Fill those back ribs right up to the scapula. Three more. And then Release. Release the jaw, tongue, the whole front line right down to the belly. Rub your tummy like a lucky Buddha. Just pause. So again, if you're somebody with a natural ability or you practice with complete relaxation, there's a long cessation before you would need feel the urgency to inhale. One minute after a little bit of practice, nothing. Why is this good? Because it pauses everything, it pauses your brain. If you need to inhale, go ahead. I'm still on the pause. But when you do, you feel that urgency and usually emanates from the solar plexus, right? It's your panic button or your will button. You inhale. Fill the sails like a sailboat. And then you just hold that to buoyancy a little more briefly. There's no tension when you do these holds, and then you release. And just breathe normally now. See if things have changed. Okay, so we'll just do two. Normally we do three, but I don't want to waste too much time with that. Now let's come to Virasa and sitting on the shin, so you can use a block. I'm going to have you place your hands on your knees. And we're going to go over this paradoxical breath again here, but more in a vinyasa. So rather than lifting the chest on the inhale, we're going to round. So we're going to pillow the back behind us so we can breathe into those back ribs. Inhale. Shoulder blades spread. Exhale. I float forward. 
kind of like a seal coming up out of the water. Inhale, I wave back. It comes the wave into the belly, it's combing up the front line, curling, spreading the ribs away from the spine, and then exhale. So this is a basic pattern of the paradoxical breath. Now we can take it forward to hands and knees, and this will play into the Chaturanga Dandasana, but we're going to inhale, drop our head, round our shoulders. I think I may have showed this last week. Shoulder blades spread apart, get a nice stretch through the rhomboid. Exhale. Everything falls into place. Shoulder blades get flat to the spine. Inhale, I draw back. I can look at my knees, draw my belly in, Riyana Bandha. Exhale, release. Just start working with this here. Or you can bring it into a little bigger range of motion. You slide back to child's pose, drop your head, inhale, cat belly up. Exhale, look forward, drift back down like a receding wave. Inhale, come forward, around the spine. Exhale. Hips go down. So this is your next port of call if you're able to do this. Then the last one is come forward like a wave, stay rounded, exhale, lay the belly all the way down on the ground, tap your forehead. Inhale when you come up, stay rounded. Head is down, and exhale, drift back, looking at your hands. Inhale, round, head dropped, shoulders broad, shoulder blades broad. Exhale, ah, the wave, your body surfing, maybe all the way down for plunk. Inhale, pitch the shoulders forward, the shoulder blades broaden. And exhale, come back. So you get the picture and you can start to get a little more organic here and take any movements that feel good. So if you don't like the body surfing, then you can start to play in each shoulder, which we're gonna do in a moment anyway. Then go ahead and either take a child's pose or take your first downward dog, see how it feels in the shoulders. If you need to bend the knees, draw your belly and hips back, you can do it that way. Or some of you could even come up and do a chair dog so that the shoulders feel no pressure at all pulling the back of the chair. We're all going to get a chance to do that later, but I've got a few students who may want to go for that option now. Okay, so child's pose, chair dog. Down dog. Okay, so then go ahead and come down to hands and knees. I'm going to have you take your knees together and just see if you can hula hoop. So you're going to round counter clock. If you got a little hula hoop. And then you're going to switch directions. So light squeeze of the knees together. And this, of course, is destabilizing your seat of your shins and knees, but relying more on your core. So I'm just tricking you into a little bit of core work. I also want you to feel, however, the movement of pressure into each shoulder as you go around the circles and see how it feels. Now, if you have any shoulder injuries, a traditional way to deal with with them is to spin the palms out of it. So the thumbs are facing forward a little bit more. So everybody can try this and then sit back into puppy dog and just check out your thumb bones and project them forward. This is gonna externally rotate the upper arm. So you could come right into a down dog here and just feel how this could help your shoulder issues and keep the inner part of the shoulder 
the armpit lifted, rotated out. So let's come down now. We're going to now start to just do a little circle like a jungle cat around the left shoulder. So you can see what I'm doing on hands and knees, and I'm going to do a, just a circle around that shoulder and just feel how that is. And then I'm going to circle around the right shoulder as I move back and forth with my hips and just see what kind of shape that shoulder is in. And this is still exploratory mode. Okay. And now we're going to go ahead and bring the knees to regular hip width or slightly, slightly narrower. And let's extend that right leg back. I want to mirror you. And we can leave the toes on the ground and you're just going to have a push-up type of pressure into the palms and see where we're bearing weight in the fingers. So generally where there's an injury and then you can switch legs and kick the left leg back, push into the ball mount and push into the palms. Generally where there's a shoulder injury, you're gonna notice in your hands that the bones of the hands don't spread and bear weight evenly. So I've got a left shoulder injury that I still am working out. And so my left fingers have a, a tougher time starfishing evenly out. Yeah, and you might even get a shake in an injured arm. So now we're gonna come up with some techniques to help that. So now we're gonna take our forearms down onto the ground. And we're going to cup them together, clamshell shell them together and slide our right foot back. And go on the ball mount or the heel, doesn't matter. And then take your right palm as a kickstand. So you can see the setup here. So I've got my right leg slid back, I've got my right palm like a kickstand, and I've got my left forearm right down on the ground here. Now I'm going to take my forearm and just start to energetically slide it and go easy. I'm going to start to slide it without moving it, just press it over to the left. And that's going to turn my gaze to the right. Just stay here, take some breaths. And I want you to try and feel how the left shoulder blade is broadening, stretching away from the spine with this, like an elbow pressure out with the left forearm. And it's gonna integrate the scap into the left rib cage. Now, of course, the show-offs can go ahead and do some leg lifts, coming forward and bearing weight on that left forearm a little more and go ahead and kick your right leg up to the ground, the sky rather. But as you do it, don't let the shoulder collapse, right? So don't let it collapse inward. Let this pressure out, the scrubbing the mat out to the left with that left forearm will keep the protraction in the back shoulder blade. See how that works? Maybe you could take it all the way up to half moon modification, but don't collapse in the shoulder, pushing out. Let's try the other side. A little tricky, but I think you could probably do it. So we're going to take the, this time, the right forearm down. It's pretty much directly under your shoulders. You can take it forward if it feels better back, but try to get right under. Left leg goes back, either on the ball mound or heel, kind of like the ball mound. And my left hand is a little kickstand. So I don't want to collapse the weight into my right shoulder, so I'm going to scrub. So energetically, it's like this, I'm scrubbing out to the right. Like I was doing this sort of PT exercise for my shoulder. But instead, I isometrically just drag that right shoulder out to the right. Maybe I can start to peek 
to the left. Can you just check it out? And you're doing some good work moving the ribs and integrating them, the right rib cage, the underside rib cage into the shoulder blade. Now you could do some leg lifts, sure, and lift your left leg up to 200 reps or whatever you want. But as you travel forward, a little more weight on that right forearm, I'm going to keep dragging the elbow out, pressing it out to the right for support. And of course, some of you were show off in nature, like your teacher, you could take a full half moon on forearm variation. Okay. Hopefully you're having fun. Okay, let's, let's try a downward dog. And again, you can turn the, the fingers out and just feel the shoulders. Well, let's go ahead and walk the feet to the hands, come up to a flat back, hands on shins, headlong. Inhale and exhale, forwards, fold. Bend your knees, come up through chair pose, inhale, and exhale, stand. Now we're going to do some ski racing, because it is ski season. <laughs> but before we ski, that was just the teaser, gonna come into chair using this paradoxical breath. So most people do chair like this. Okay, we stick the butt out and drink. The teacher says, bring your arms back by your ears. And they ruin the AC joints here. So we know better, we're gonna billow out the back ribs because we have our froggy breath. And we're gonna come into it, touching the back of the hands on the knees drawing the belly in, and then as we exhale, the arm bones fall right into the sockets nicely, and then you can stand. Inhale, we go down and round, we breathe into the back ribs, we brush the knees with the hands. Exhale, ah, the arms and the scaps just fall right into place. So this is something you could do if you're bored Down and up. One more time. Down you go. Uddiya Navanda Kriya. Pull the belly in. It billows out the back ribs, the shoulder blades. Exhale. The pose integrates. Very good. Okay, so now I did promise a ski racer. So at the front of the mat, I'm going to take our Chair pose, inhale. Then we're going to wrap it. We're going to wrap it even more. So this movement of bringing the forearms together, crouching down, is another oponistic, oponic pose. So inhale, we curl, step right foot back. Brush the knee. Exhale, warrior one. And then step the feet together, stand. Let's try another one. Inhale, chair, exhale. Inhale, ski racer, wrap the frontal ribs, draw the belly in, slide or step, left foot back, brush the front knee, feet together. And you're done with one cycle. Let's try it again. Frog breath, inhale, round, brush, exhale, chair. Inhale, curl again, ski jumper, your poles are together. Slide your right foot back, brush. Exhale, everything sinks in. Step the feet together. Inhale, chair. Exhale, arms fall into place. Inhale, ski jumper, slide your left heel back, brush the front knee, and take the bonus. So just flow a little bit, try this, and see if it makes sense. And I'm going to just do it silently. 
And you can either follow along or just start to play in your own body. Once you understand the principle of the wrap, you can go any number of places. For example, again, for the show offs in the group, and then we'll get to the chair work. Inhale, chair. Exhale, sit. Inhale, ski jumper. Exhale, step back, warrior one. Now, if I wrap in my ski jumper from warrior one, and some of you can try this, lift the back heel, I could come into a mock version of warrior three. Need to get a brush and then release. Inhale. Exhale, ski jumper, inhale, slide back, left foot up, wrap. And what's happening is so the back ribs are filling up, breathing into the back ribs, you're protracting the shoulder blade. There's enormous power in the Udiya Navanda. We can lift up. This is for the more advanced folks to play with. Okay, all that was just to get you warmed up. Now let's get to the real work. So take your chair. If you came in late, uh, grab a chair. Hopefully you have one. You could use a wall. And we're going to come down to a low lunge, the hands on the back of the chair. So here's the real deal. So most of the time, you, you just low lunge, and you've got to get deep down into a low lunge to feel anything in this back and flexor. And Ann and I were working the other day and she's like, well, I don't, when I do that, I don't really feel like I can stay grounded in the back shin. Not only that, but it makes the hips asymmetrical. So what if we start holding the chair like this and hopefully a pretty, a nice tall chair, but no matter, it's pretty close to you. And then we take our forearms like we did moments ago when we just clamshell them and put one on top of the other. Got my left knee into the chair back. And what am I gonna do? I'm gonna push down into that back shin. Push down. And if you do this successfully, you're gonna get a, a stretch without doing anything, without gliding forward in that back hip flexor, that right hip flexor. Now, additionally, as we take our regal bound elbows and opposite hands on the back of the chair, we push down and we're setting the upper arm bones into the structure of the shoulder girdle. So we're building isometric strength just by pushing down. Again, those that are bored could be like, well, I want to do some lifting of the back knee and down and get my Jane Fonda exercise it, but just breathing steadily with a relaxed throat into this isometric work, pushing into back shin, pushing into chair is really nice. And it sets the shoulder girdle up really well. How about if we take a rotation to the left? So we're gonna leave the right forearm on that chair and the left hand comes to the hip. And we just rotate enough that feels good. And again, I'm going to push down through that right shin. I'm going to push into the chair with my forearm, which I grab. And I get a nice stretch through the right side of the neck, the shoulders down, and all is well. And I'm not really trying to over rotate. In fact, the way we're doing this prevents over rotation. Let's come up, let's curl our right toes under and come up to a a warrior one stance with the hands on the chair and just push down like that. Now, if you don't have a chair, you could be working against the wall, it's okay. And as I push down into the chair, I settle my shoulders down into the sockets. And people that do warrior one generally get up out of the sockets and lose some strength. So we're contracting under the side ribs, the lats. Now we pivot out to warrior two. 
And what are we going to do? We're going to take that left forearm on the top of the chair. Again, if you only have a wall, you can work against the wall. I'm just going to grab that chair. I'm going to push back through my right heel. I'm going to toe my belly. I'm going to hang out. So what am I doing? I'm just starting to push down into the chair and my forearm. The shoulder feels really happy. It's equally balanced in the front and the back aspects. Life is good. I could take the full reach of the right arm. I could go deeper, but not so deep is that I'm compromising the shoulder. So just work that. Again, it doesn't seem real glamorous to do this, but really good strength through back leg, out of right hip, and everything around the shoulder should be happy. Let's square off hands to the chair and step our feet together and press our hands down to the chair back to take our symmetrical tadasana. Then we're going to just go back to the other side. So we're going to glide our left knee to the ground. You can pat it. Chair is pretty close. Again, if you didn't have a chair, you could be working against a wall like this. This, this is equally good. It's a little more difficult to get the down pressure. You get a little forward pressure, which is good, but. So here I am binding the opposite elbows, etc. And I check out the spacing of my knees, make feel good in my low back. And now I start to push energetically down into that left shin, that back shin. And I push down into the chair. And so I have two actions going. And I'm getting some nice spread of the shoulder blades, the fascia along the shoulders and the shoulder blades. Then I'm going to leave the left forearm there and take the right hand to the hip. I keep pushing down with this chair forearm. And I keep pushing down through the back shin. And breathe. There's no work in the head, the throat. Head should be like a little bobble head. And you square off, you're going to curl your left toes under, come up to warrior one for a moment, pushing down with straight arms. And then you pivot that back foot out to 90, that left foot. And the right forearm comes down under the chair. So all this integrity, the underside ribs up to the shoulder, just check it out, just pat that shoulder, feel how it's balanced. Inside and outside of the shoulder and just work it. So if you have an injury, obviously you take care, but otherwise scoop the belly in, extend through the back heel, and this feels really good. I just got a nice release through the right side of my neck. There's a lot of space in this right neck to shoulder, right here in this valley. I can extend the left arm, it's fine. And breathe. All static poses rely on pranayama, the breath to feed them. Otherwise, they're just lifeless. Structure. So breathe into it. And feed the meter. Then we take the hands to the front of the chair, lift the back heel, take a little hop and release. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is nothing to do with the shoulders, but it's good anyway. And we'll do the hips on the chair. So you have two options. One, you're pretty flexible and you just sling your left knee on top of that chair back like that. And, you know, push down as a half pigeon standing. Still, you grab the chair and you lift up. Now, if you can't do that, you could take it down to the chair like so. And you can take your left shin 
across the top of the chair like this. So it's half pigeon without dropping, destroying your knee. Some people, and this is where a few advanced folks can slide down, depending on your chair and your body, you can put the right knee down and work this way. But again, I have a chair and I'm pressing, I'm happy. Dismount off that and just slide the leg off to the right like that. Okay, so let's work that again on the other side. Again, pretty flexible folks you can just sling your right knee and chin over the chair. You hold the chair, you work down, you push down into the chair and you lift. Same thing, my extended leg to the ground, my left leg is pushing down. My right pigeon leg is pushing down. So it's dynamic, even though it's static. You wanna try the other pose. Different ways to get into it. You could just kneel along the left side of it like that. Your right knee forward, and you can just take your right knee up onto it like that. If you wanted to do it that way. The other way was the extended left leg. This way, with the knee down, if you can find an appropriate chair, is kind of nice. Okay, dismounting if you're down in the pose I'm in, and slide your leg off to the left side like that. Okay, stand up and take our chair to the side, the left of the back. And let's just stand for a second and see how things are feeling. So coming into chair using our Paradoxical breath, we're gonna draw the belly in, billow out the back ribs, touch the backs and the knees with the hands, look down, and then bring the arms up. Go ahead and step back with your right foot and open out to warrior two. Now you've already done the side angle on the chair, so let's try to remember what that feels like. And let's do that by taking our, as we did the other day, let's take our left arm across the body, grab the wrist and just draw that left scap long. So that's the stretch portion of the pose. Triangle is a nice complement because now if we straighten the front leg and we start to just move the arm like this, swinging it, you can make a little beak with your fingers, taking your fingers together, lift your wrist up like that. And if, it, if it's easier to do with your front knee bent, it's fine for now. So all I want you to do is feel this just above the shoulder, and this is gonna work the deltoid muscle. So if I were to put my right hand on top of my left shoulder, I can feel that tense. And we're gonna to wanna to employ that in trikonasana now. So we throw our arm forward, the back of the wrist lifted, straighten our front leg, inhale. There's our little beak. And then we place the hand on the chair, rotate the body over to the right. And there's very little weight, if any, on that left shoulder. So if you're super flexible, and you can go to the ground, then that's fine. The problem will be, of course, getting up out of the depths of the pose. And as you get deeper, the shoulder, the right shoulder tends to collapse inward. So this preliminary movement of getting the deltoid set and then taking the pose makes things feel nicer in the shoulders. I think. Let's take our feet to parallel for a moment, just walk them in a little closer, horse stance, hands 
on the thighs with the fingers in and again, broadening the shoulder blades. Inhale and exhale, rotate the back of the mat, inhale the center and rotate. So this is wrapping the entire rib cage and scapula. And you've done this work before. And then standing and coming to the front of the mat, taking your chair to the right side of the front of the mat so we can do triangle pose here. Feet together. How do the shoulders feel now? Can just roll them around a little bit. They have holding patterns, especially if you have something called frozen shoulder, which something like 60% of all women get. I got it from an injury and it's kind of a beast. Uh, it dissolves very slowly. So here we go. We're going to come down to chair, scoop the belly in, backs of hands, and then ah, arm bones, scaps fall into place. We're going to step our left foot back, open to warrior two. Now I'm going to grab our, we're going to start reaching with our right arm. Round the right wrist, left hand, just bring it across the body. Get another stretch of this whole right rib cage, shoulder blade. If you feel pain doing anything, of course you just modify. But to me, this is taking the whole rib cage and just whoosh, giving me a back rub, a fascia, just pulling the fascia away from the spine. That's great. The opposite pattern, though, now in treatment option is to toss playfully the front arm, the right arm forward, and I'm making a little beat with my fingers together and letting the wrist be the lead piece. And I'm monitoring it to do the simple swing of the arm. First of all, do you feel any pain, but also you're going to put your left hand on your top of your left shoulder. Your right shoulder, left hand, right shoulder. Can you feel the, the deltoid muscle, this band here, the lifter of the shoulder, get strengthened? So sometimes these simple movements are really important. And then we take one more lift, straighten the front leg, and place the hand on the chair and rotate out to the left treatment awesome. So, how do those shoulders feel now? Are they balanced? front and back, are they collapsing forward? Like you're on your cell phone or computer, are they overarched back because we do a lot of ballet? Can you find the happy point? Then you come up, pivot, right toes to left, hands to hips. Take that goddess pose again, or horse riding stance. And then this time we're going to try to take the backs of the hands to the backs of the ribs as we did earlier. I'm going to come close to the screen to show you. So here, I don't know if you can see. Okay. So you're going to be here, or if you can manage it, backs of the hands. See, I'm going to just brush these ribs away. Brush apart. Be your own masseuse. Stop. Uh, Now, if you can, if you're fancy, you use the paradoxical movement to work higher up the ribs and then watch. And then I rotate the other way, get the palms to the back. So this is only for a couple people, but I use this rounding, this spreading inhale and then exhale, I reverse the curve. Now the lower shoulder blades are net, the upper shoulder blades are broad. Can't do that. Bind your hands like this in your low back, round, and then exhale. Find the happy medium. And then if you like, you can start to fold with your bound arms, either finger bound or palm bound as I did. And I'm going to put this chair in front of me just to show you that you could just place your head on the chair like an ostrich and just work here. 
because we're working primarily with the shoulders. Now, back in the day, and a few of you still may be able to do this, we used to do this extreme movement in prosperita. We bind the arms, we inhale, and then exhale, you get your, your head down and the arms come all the way over to the mat, right? Not a great idea. So you always want to keep your, your elbows bent and the shoulders somewhat protracted. Okay, instead of just trying to squeeze the heck out of the scapula and get your arms to the floor. Not a great idea. Come up, you pull against your bind, and then hopefully you're home safe. Let's go down into a seated position now and work a little bit on the shoulders. And we're gonna do a little bit of work in bridge pose but before we do, we're gonna roll on our shoulders and happy baby. So go ahead down there and hold the feet or get a strap and just roll from side to side. I want you to feel the fascia of the rib cage that we were working with moments ago and spread it out. And then go ahead and hold your knees rock and roll up to seated and just watch for a second what I'm gonna do in bridge pose. It's a little tricky and I don't want you looking at camera when you do it. So I'm going to take a bridge pose here and I'm gonna scooch my shoulder blades in a little bit. I'm gonna knit the frontal ribs. Then I'm gonna see if I can reach one arm up to the sky, I've got my left arm and I'm gonna just gently pitch over just a little bit over that right shoulder blade. Bring that arm down, right arm comes up, a lot of core work and then I gently plaster and roll and stays on the ground over to the left shoulder blade. So this is a really, um, this is a strength move. So take it at your leisure. And what, I, what you're doing is you're building some strength back there. In protraction. Yeah, no looking at camera if you're doing that. And then when you're done, I'll give you a few minutes to play with that and hug your knees. Okay, let's rock and roll up to seated again. Then we're going to come to hands and knees. Do just a couple more things for the shoulders, which may feel good. So some people might want a chair to do this, but you can do it with or without or a yoga block of the chair. And we had our ski jumper form earlier. So what if we ski jumper our forearms, palms are to the sky, forearms are on the chair. I walk my knees back and I put my head inside my biceps. So it's like a massage table. They always have to be pretty close to be able to lay the head without slipping through the biceps. You can walk the knees back to your heart's content. Draw your belly in. And this is going to Stretch the triceps, yes. Stretch the lats. Stretch the back of the neck. This can also be done. If you're happy on the chair, stay there. It's a safer way to go. This could also be done on your mat. You do your ski jumper down here. Forearms together, palms up. You drop your head in the cradle. Slide your arms and forms forward. Just sit back in the child's pose or with the toes curled under, if you're feeling adventurous, come up to a lifted legs like a modified dolphin. You're going to get an enormous 
stretch and strengthen through those back ribs, the mid ribs, the back of the head. Keep wrapping the rib cage around the sides in toward the sternum, lifting the belly up. Okay. Come back to your awesome and see how you're feeling. All right, so we do have a couple more minutes, so we'll give this a shot. And again, a little tricky, but fun. You used to come to my class in the past. You know this one, but we started class doing something on the forearm like that. And we were energetically scrubbing the forearm out. So just come to hands and knees and see if you can feel this retraction and protraction. Retraction, like you're gonna thread the needle, you lift up preliminary movement of the right arm and then exhale like you're gonna go through. So you can make the you can minimize this. And I like to make a fist when not that I'm being martial, but it contracts the muscles in the inner forearm when you go under. So if I'm using my left hand to reach up, remember the reach of the deltoid and trypanosin, and then exhale, I reverse the curve like I'm doing a little hook punch under my armpit, right armpit. And this is just a great shoulder. Stretch and strengthen. Okay, but then it gets even more fun. <laughs> so I'll sit back and watch, and I'm going to now cross both forms to the elbow level. The elbows are going to be together like this on the ground. Let me move closer. And when I get down on the ground, just to show you, I'm going to be pushing into one and the other to move in this manner. My forehead will be on the ground. And then I'm going to ask you to come up from the ground and go. It's very exciting. So we give it a shot. We've done all the prelim work. You need a block or a blanket under your head. Let's cross that right forearm in front of the left. And we're going to just face plant our forehead plant down. So we're like hands hands and knees architecture, but now we're gonna push into one forearm as we look the other way and then the other forearm and shimmy from side to side. Don't go much, don't disturb the neck. Chin is tucked a little bit toward your chest and jaw and garabanda. You're in your cat belly, rounded back modality. Now start to sit back, hips toward heels, lift your arms up, keep them crossed, and you have Garuda awesome. And lift it up, you can lift it down. You see how that worked? I came from the ground, shifty, shifty, draw my belly back, Garuda awesome. Let's go the other way. Plant the forearms down, the elbows pretty crossed. Just rest on the head a little and just a little shimmy shim. Left to right helps the shoulders, helps the neck. And you draw your belly in, keep your head down. Sit and be awesome and cross. The arms are already been nicely crossed, so you may get through to awesome. Left. Anyways. Okay, one more and then we're done. We're going to take this off and off and pose. We're going to take the take the heels and the hands and face plant and round the back, pull the belly and look through the knee. Big stretch for the mid back shoulder blades apart. And then release. Come on to your backs. And just drift the knees over to one side and look to the other opposite side. A little mild 
twist is to take that fascia and spiral and move it a little bit after our work. Any other poses you like? You can take. And as I go over to the right with my knees, and you can come up and take a peek. As I go to the right with my knees, I can look to my left shoulder. I can roll the pinky finger off the ground. I can externally rotate that shoulder. Knees to center. Inhale, exhale to the left. I can look right. I can lift pinky finger off the ground, the other finger. And I tighten as I did in trikonos in the back of the shoulder. Be careful, folks with injuries and the superstimators. I can do a dual rotation of the arms like an Egyptian goddess. So as you're rolling on your back, your arms are moving in opposite spirals to ring out the shoulders. If I were to replicate it here, right? So palm up, this palm down, and then the knees going this way. So the shoulders are getting this rinse. Hey, Shavasan. And you can get the legs to shake, the shoulders to shake. If this was hard work on your shoulders, you can place your palms in the front of your shoulders and just rest them there. And just get them to relax a little bit, maybe give them a chimney shake. I always go to the frontal hips with my hands as well. And just rest the palms there. Relaxing tongue, throat, jaw. Letting the breath slow down. Remembering the first part of practice, if you came in and did the pranayama, the release and pause at the end of the exhale. Body once again regains stillness. And the hands can really go to any portion of the body if you need to cue it to relax over the face, crown point. Heart center. So you can just stay there and shavasana out, but I'm going to bend the knees, roll off, close up fast in a timely way. It's always good to check out how you feel after the practice and see if it's easier to set. <laughs> 